It's Friday. We love it. Not because it's the end of the week. If you're digging solid clay, use one of these bad boys. This is what happens when you take your eye off the ball for a split second. So, as is the case with any machinery, it can go wrong. And it has. The track has come off. Attack barra. Good morning, guys. Welcome along to another day on our build. So, today it's muddy. It's been raining all night and windy. We've had boarding go over. We've had lots more mud. We're still smiling. We're always smiling, aren't we, Will? Oh, yeah, yeah. baby. Oh, yes. Will is with me today. And what he's going to be doing is continuing to get these rebar in here. We've cut this rebar at 800 mil and then we're drilling in 400 mil into this footing, which is our new footing. Doesn't look very new, but trust me, it is. And then we're going to have 400 mil sticking out. So that will basically act as a key to lock this foot in with the next new foot in that we're going to pour later on today. So it's a 12 mil rebar. Will's using a 12 mil drill bit, so it's nice and tight. So you've got the ridges on this rebar here, yeah, which act as sort of a, a locking device. So once you work that through into there, it's absolutely solid. You're not getting that out. There's obviously a little bit of wobble on it, but you'll never be able to pull them out. So once all this concrete's in, it's going to lock this together nicely. That's Will's job for the next little while. And then my job, because we couldn't get the digger any further because of this footing, what we're doing here, we're going to tow under the existing footing by 400 mil. So this is going to be a hand dig, so I'm going to get down in the hole and start digging that out, and then we can get our concrete poured later on today. So, John's top tip for today, while you're in a trench, if you're digging solid clay, use one of these bad boys. This is just carving through it. I've got the old school method here, but why use old school when you can use new school? Save yourself. <laughs> Obviously, there's going to be a little bit I'm going to have to chip out, but this is making easy work of it. Just carves right through it. Nobody likes a sweaty, sweaty John, do they? So let's just keep it nice and simple and go for that. So guys, that is done. Towing uh, is completed, it's all raked out. Now all we've got to do is move that lot. So just getting the digger started up. You can just scoot that out, we'll remove the shutter in and then get rid of that. We're all just getting the last couple of bars in there now. So once that's done, we can get, in, get all these boards moved. The concrete is en route, so no pressure whatsoever. Diamonds are forged under pressure though, aren't they? So this is where we excel, <laughs> or something like that. Right, let's get on with it. Yeah, so we can tap that down. We'll, we'll shift, we'll leave one of them boards there. This is what happens when you take your eye off the ball for a split second. Stood there doing it a hopper at a time, so we we're really close to the, the limit where we needed to be. They're filling the hopper up and pushing the whole tube through. It's just gone a little bit too much. So it's always better with the footings to be a little bit lower rather than higher, because otherwise it means you've got to start cutting blocks down. So we need to make sure we've got this out down to the right level. It's a bit of a pain. All the concrete in is now done. That's all covered over, so just so it's safe for tonight. We don't want anybody falling in there. Job for tomorrow is to start getting all this oversight out. Bit of excess concrete there. That will soon break up tomorrow because that will still be green. So I can easily just claw that back with a bucket. And then we will start to get this looking a bit tidier and a bit less muddy. I've had to jet wash my boots because my feet weighed about three stone. 
So all we've got to do now is just close it and we're good, we're off. So thanks for watching us today. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning guys, it is Friday, so it's always a good day because we get to have a fry up. We are gonna attack this today, me and Will are on it. Yes! Oh, Boom! Friday, baby. It's Friday, we love it. Not because it's the end of the week, because we love being at work, but because we get to have a fry up and Fridays is just a nice day anyway, aren't they? For everybody. So yeah, what we're gonna do today is start getting rid of this oversight. So first of all, I'm gonna scrape some of this out of the way, move over to here and make a nice little ramp down here. That footing under there is still gonna be green, so we need to make sure it's protected. So when Will's driving over with the tack barrow, it's nice and covered. So we're just gonna make a little sort of ramp and then Will can get over there to me where I'll be scraping all this back and all this back. That is pretty much what we're gonna be doing today, digging out dirt, which is pretty much all we've been doing for the past two weeks, but it's the nature of the game. So stay tuned and enjoy watching us dig in. So what we've got here is our soil pipe running through. We already knew it was running through there. And now obviously as we've spoken this oversight away, we've exposed it here. There was a knuckle that was onto there that is now there. So we've got a big hole in what is the soil pipe. So what we're gonna do is have a chat with the client, make sure they don't use the toilet. And then we'll put a new temporary piece of pipe in across here, just so we can get all this excav excavation done safely and without any mess. So this is one of the things that you need to be careful of if you're doing any work like this. We got to this point here with a little dig and looking at that water main there, this is an old lead pipe. Looking at that, it's going to come in here and come up over here somewhere. But luckily I got the shovel in there and was digging a bit more out and you can see now it comes over this way. So it could be anywhere under this concrete. So I need to be very careful when I'm doing this now. Always err on the side of caution when you're dealing with water mains or gas mains or anything like that because you just don't know where they're going to go. Like I was saying about this lead pipe, uh, there it is. I found it with the digger. It ran right the way over there. I thought it went in there, but it didn't. It came out here and goes in over there somewhere by the looks of it. So at least I found it. I have kinked it a little bit, but it's the beauty about a lead pipe. It's got a bit of flexibility. First of all, we're going to go and have a break because it's one o'clock. So we're going to go and have some food. But secondly, after break, what we're going to do is uh, get this pipe sorted out. So we've got the kitchen sink, we've got a washing machine, we've got a shower, basin, the water from the roof, we've got the toilet, we've got everything coming into this run, okay? So it's important that we don't leave the clients without any amenities over the weekend. So we're going to get this in next after break, uh, and then I'll show you how we do that.
grab lorry has just arrived. They're at the front. Can you see them? There they are. So they're going to remove one of the loads from out the front. There's probably about two out there, to be honest. We did manage to stack it pretty high. So once that load is gone, we've then got some room to get rid of some more of this. Joe's just getting the big breaker set up because we've actually got some of the original footing in here from the previous extension. So that just needs breaking out and then we can carry on ripping the rest of this oversight out. Some more down here and we've got the patio in here as well. So we're going to take some of this down so we can get some MOT in there. Patio. So we're literally coming from the edge of the foot in there across to where these boards are. So that's 2.5 meters, just to give us a little bit of extra clearance there. It's going to be actually 2.4, which is obviously need a little bit just to play around with here. So yeah, we're going to drag this bit out now and then we can work our way out and get all that done as well. So what we're going to do now is get the soak away done. We've got the majority of the patio area done there. We've just got a little bit more to take out down this edge, but for the time being, we're going to leave that in just so we can get through the tack barrow. So we need a two meters by a one meter hole for these to sit in at 1.2 meter deep. We're going to go a little bit wider because we're going to get some pea gravel around the perimeter of this. So what I'm going to do now is just basically mark this up with my tricky spray paint. It is blue. I know blue is for water. So technically I am right to use blue. I was thinking is blue the right color to use but yeah it is because it's water so obviously it is we're five and a half meters away from the building with this regulation state we need to be at least five meters away so we're well in spec with that so we'll get that dug out and we're good to go so as is the case with any machinery it can go wrong and it has the track has come off the tack barra you can see in there we've got the wheel and it's actually popped out of the middle of the track so we're gonna have to remove this plate let the tensioner off pull it back on and then tighten it back up so we've struggled for quite some time with this haven't we <laughs> we've ended up having to take the whole track off there was quite a bit of mud build up behind it so yeah. It's just the best way yeah. just to keep everything clean. We're just getting Joe now to clean off the track there and then we're going to hopefully reassemble it. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Watch this space. So if you do have one of these machines, completely disregard what it says in the instructions about getting one of these tracks back on because we just fitted it in the opposite way and yeah. it goes on. Okay, this one first and got it on that way. Yeah, so it tells you to put the toothed wheel on first and then get it over there. But we had to do it the opposite way because it just wouldn't physically go on. So there you go. There's today's top tip ignore instructions do what you want to do if you're a man normally you just ignore instructions just anyway the and throw them away the McCoy's exactly <laughs> <laughs> so today is done uh unfortunately it hasn't been very productive today at least hope to get all this out and to start getting our egg crates in but we did have a massive issue as you saw with the tap barrel that's all fixed now and cleaned off although it doesn't look like we did clean it now but that's how foggy it is around here with all this that's it another day done all we've got to do now is clean down and we're going home 